okay um, and, and indeed if I come here under submission you notice that uh, now I was hoping that some of uh, oh I've noticed that we we'll notice that there are two submissions so there is one from me and I believe one from uh, uh, Mr. Msenge here right um, by default I don't know what sort of user roles people have but what you notice is if you have um, a journal editor role under my queue you will find all submissions that have not yet been assigned to an editor so the author is done here right we are done with the author but we're still on submission um, as part of submission for us to see what happens next we are still on the remember I said we are going through this four stages submission review copy editing and production we are still on submission the author is done once the author is done and they submitted an article what we see right on our end people on the editorial team is this under my queue there's things under my queue unassigned or active and what has been archived I'm going to quickly tell you about these things here under my queue would be things that will require your attention and by default, anything that has been submitted online will require your attention because you have a journal editor role assigned to you. Okay? If you're a reviewer, you may see things that have been assigned to you to review, for instance. When you click on unassigned, you'll be able to see all things that are pending in the system but have not been assigned to anybody. So no one is working on this. And then when you click on all active, you see everything. On archives, you see everything that has been published. Again, remember that when you have, when, when you publish things, right? When things have been uploaded in the journal online using OJS, they'll, they'll be in either of the four states here. You'll be at submission stage, you'll be under review, there'll be being a copy edited somewhere or they'll be in production okay this is what we mean here so i'm going to ask that we go on my 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 queue and by by the way by default the things that will be um uh under my queue in this particular case they're associated by me because i've uploaded this as an author i'm an author here so in your case, what you will see here is the thing that you've just uploaded. Again, I want to draw attention to something else. You notice here that there's a triangle with an exclamation mark in white, that icon. It's like a warning symbol or icon. It's telling you, alongside it, it's telling you to say no edit has been assigned to this submission yet. So nobody has been tasked to see it through to the subsequent stages. We are on stage one of four. Submission, review, copy edit, production. Okay. Uh, in most instances, what you may have to do, and I'll use an example of what uh, Mr. Msenge has uploaded. I'm surprised that uh, none of us has submitted this, by the way. I hope we are following through here, but that's fine. Um, we we'll assume we're using Mr. Msenge's um, we are working on this. What you would do is, the very first thing you want to do is, uh, and this, this needs to be well thought through. There ought to be processes and procedure on how you are going to handle this internally. Otherwise, nobody's going to claim this. So generally, maybe the chief edit or something, or the technical person in the journal, uh, once the notification comes, because every time you, you do this, right, there's an email trigger. So you get an email to say, you know, uh, this article has been submitted. It requires an, uh, your attention or something. So you log in like this. And then what you do is to the right here, you see this, bottom, this arrow here facing down? You contextualize it. And you will notice here that there are a number of options here, right? View submission, you can check the activity log or you can delete this. Uh, you want to stay away from deleting this because if an author submits something and you delete it, it's gone. Um, you can view a log here to gain a sense of what has happened here. If you want a traceable record of what has happened, 
So we noticed that on the first of uh, of August, um, uh, so on the first of August initially here, right? There's a series of things that happened. A file was uploaded, right? There's an ID for the file. The username of the person that uploaded this file, and then it also tells you when the submission was completed, right? Close this. We don't want to delete. If I say view submission. I'll get to an interface that will allow me to do an important thing here. Visualize the four stages, submission, review, copy edit, production. And then more importantly, there'll be a window that will be opened which will allow me to add, to assign people to work on this. In, in your case, in your journal, right? Uh, I could be wrong. I don't know how nursing is like as a, uh, as, uh, as a discipline, but maybe you have sub-specialties okay so nursing is broad here maybe maybe you have you could say oh we have public health maybe you have uh, midwifery or something i don't know what else is there in in all these spe sub-specialties amongst you maybe you could have people that are experts in this in these areas right such that when the chief editor is here and they are trying to think of uh, who am I going to assign to do this? Because you want to, the, the importance of assigning an, a, a journal editor, a section editor to this is they will probably be the ones responsible to looking for reviewers, following up on reviews, discussing with the author, right? If there's something wrong with this. Okay, so internally you may have just a short document specifying to say, if there's a publication that comes through and we notice, so this publication is to do with public health, it would be, um, it would be maybe, I don't know if it would be, uh, uh, perhaps it would be uh, uh, Madame Bear or something, or Mr. Singh or something, right? Or Prof, or something like that. But it has to be internal. Otherwise, if you, if you don't come up with a plan, what will happen is, uh, it, it will likely be the chief editor or the, the technical person who will have a lot of work to do. And it, it, it's bound to be a lot of work, right? Because uh, I'm looking at a country like Zambia here. We have a number of nursing schools. And all those places are potential sources of, like, articles from authors, right? So when you issue a call for papers, I'm pretty sure you'll have an overwhelming, you know, response to that call for papers. So there, there has to be a plan here. But for now, we're going to assign an editor, okay, to... We're going to assign an editor to, um, to this article. And you see, when you're assigning an editor, in instances where you have a lot of people that are part of the editorial, it, you know, it, may be, it may be difficult. So you can search here, right? Search for the name or something. But in this particular case, only have three names, which is fine. Um, so I'll just say we'll add and I'm wondering why I'm not coming up as an editor here. I thought I, thought I uh, oh wow, maybe I don't have the role here. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to exit here and just check my role. Uh, if I don't have the role, I'll add myself as an editor. I will edit. And uh, I will, yeah, so I'm just journal manager. So I'll add this as a journal editor. The three people we are seeing there are appearing because they, because they've, they've been added with the journal editor role, if you will. And what I've noticed with this particular version of OJS is that uh, uh, it's quite unfortunate, really, but it, it misbehaves sometimes when when you use Chrome. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to journals.unza.zm and log in using... Um, I'm going to log in using uh, Firefox. <clears throat> and then I will add... A role for myself here so that I'm journal it you'll notice that instead of three names 
there'll be four names that will appear there. All right, just do that. And then I'm just gonna add myself here as a journal editor. And then I'll say save here, done. So I've been added as journal editor. If I come back here and then I go to submissions, I go to this submission here. Also, by the way, you notice here, this button here that is in red, <coughs> It shows you the stage <clears throat> of the submission. When you get to review, it will be tagged as review. Expand, view submission, and then I'll say assign. Now you notice now a light on appears here because I've been added as a general editor. So I can choose maybe myself uh, as a general editor. I can add multiple people actually so that people see this. Uh, you can add multiple generators and it's always a good idea because people get sick sometimes. Maybe you can have a plan as well to say every time there's a submission, we identify two people that will help each other uh, manage the submission. Just in case somebody is unavailable, they've traveled. Uh, but we'll add everybody here as a journal editor here so that you can all see what, what I'm seeing. Now, the moment I add you as a journal editor, right, you'll notice that you'll be able to, when you view the submission, you notice this. There are these things that have been added here. Send to review. If I remove myself, um, I guess I still appear here, which is, uh, it's okay anyway, but uh, maybe because I'm journal manager. Um, but ideally, you will not see this, the send to review if you're not a journal editor, if you're not a journal manager. I'll add myself again. <laughs> And then we can also add uh, uh, our other colleagues here. There's no limit as to how many editors you can add. At the very beginning, maybe you can add everybody who is in the editorial team. I don't know. But it's usually nice if you have somebody responsible for this. Now, you'll notice here, you should be able to see what I'm seeing on the screen. There's a couple of interesting things here, right? Uh, everything is interesting. but. You observe that um, <clears throat> there's there's a there's a panel on the right here, which I was using to assign roles here. There's details of the author, okay? There are details of the journal editors, and then there are these buttons here, very important, right? The blue button, the grayed out button here, and the red button. At this stage, right, at submission stage, when an author submits something. There are, there are three possible outcomes. You can either decide to say, well, this is good enough for us. We are going to send it for review, right? In which case, it will move to the next stage. Or you could say, well, there's something wrong with this submission. This author called Lighton has submitted this, this thing here, which has nothing to do with nursing, right? This is to do with computing here or open access. And quite naturally, right, if, if you have somebody who submits something that is outside scope of your journal, you decline that submission, so you decline it. Or the last option is where you say, we don't have to send this thing for review. It's going to be accepted. It will be taken for copy editing. And a classic example here is editorials, right? Each, typically, each issue of yours will have and I don't know how you are planning to do this, but generally, each issue is supposed to have an editorial. So you invite an eminent person, or maybe the chief editor, they'll write it, an editorial about the thematic area associated with that issue. You don't have to send an editorial for review because usually you are inviting an eminent person, right, in your field, an expert, maybe a professor or something in nursing, to say, I want you to write a short editorial about this. If they do that, you will click the accept and skip review so that it doesn't come here to go straight to copy editing. Okay? I thought I'd mention that. Something else that you will see is when you contextualize, when you expand these participants here, like the journal editors, you can notify them. So if the chief editor is the one who is adding the journal editors, in as much as there's a trigger, right, an email that is automatically generated to say, uh, you have been added as... As, as a journal editor or something, 
You can make a follow-up if no progress is being made. Notify them, right? And there are templates, right? Email templates, right? A template to do with editorial assignment, you know? You can also add additional things and then write a, a short message. Please note that you have been assigned as journal editor for this paper. Could you quickly perform a desk review or something? Right? Right? I won't, I won't send this message. I just say cancel it. Also, what you will notice here is you can also notify the author here. Maybe there's a delay, right? An author submits something today or they submitted something last month and there's no desk review yet. Maybe the journal editors that were assigned are busy as you just told us that most of you are going to be busy next week. Um, you may want to uh, send a message, right? Just a generic message. Say, we are sorry for the delay or something. Uh, we will process your submission in the next week or something. The, the point I'm trying to put across here is there's a feature that allows you to communicate with the participants here. Journal editors hmm? and authors as well. Okay? In addition, you'll notice here at the very bottom here, they are so-called pre-review discussions. Typically, these would be discussions that you are having with the participants here. So if you want to send messages to everybody who is added as a participant here, the author, the journal editors, you add a discussion. And then you tick whom exactly is going to be the recipient of that message. You have the subject and the message. I'll just say uh, test discussion about submission. This is just a test submission. If I say okay, that message is going to pop up and I hope it does. Uh, it could be a, an issue of Chrome or something, I don't know. Or maybe it's because of uh, messaging or something, I don't know. Uh, if this delays, I will transition to maybe Chrome, right? You know, cancel this here. I don't know if it's a Chrome issue, but I'm going to come here. <clears throat> and, oh, there's already a discussion, actually. I see there's a, there's a discussion. So meaning that it was, it was actually, yeah, it was. I, I just got excited here. I, I canceled it when there's a discussion here. So ideally, all of those people I ticked, we will see this discussion. Now, the question maybe you'll be asking yourself is, well, but, what sort of discussion are we talking about here? Well, there could be a discussion about the fact that the author, <clears throat> if this is just a, an example, right? Assuming your journal uses double blind, the expectation is that the thing that the author submits must not have these names here. If the author submits a PDF that has names or any personal identifying information, before you send it to reviewers, you will have to Communicate with the author to say, please make this necessary cor correction. Uh, again, what you notice is that these discussions, right? You choose the people to have a discussion with. It could be a discussion just amongst the journal editors here, not the author. So, 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 so point to note here is that there's an opportunity for you to discuss what has been submitted by the authors before you send it for review. What is perhaps extremely important here is that typically, I'm sure you've heard of so-called desk reviews, right? Typically a desk review is done during this process. Now, your journal would have to come up with a procedure or procedures to say, when we are conducting a desk review, check for A, B, C, D. Uh, typical things that are checked for is, uh, is paper anonymous? Anonymized. Does paper conform to page limit? Because if, if you're saying, if you tell people, right, in your call for papers, 
Our journal accepts submissions that have a maximum of 10 pages. And then you have this character, typically students, right? They submit the entire manuscript, which is 100 pages. You, you don't want to send it for review, right? It's, a, it's something that has to be reviewed at this stage. That's a desk review. So you have a discussion, you send a notification. Please resubmit as this thing goes against the house styles or the rules of the journal or something. Um, anyways, um, so there'll be a back and forth, but, but also something of importance here is, remember the author is the, is the one who has submitted this. The people that have been assigned as journal editors will, uh, can actually download this article here. So if I click on this, I can view what uh, Emmanuel Msenga submitted. And already, I see that his submission is this. I can see that uh, it's not anonymized. You know, maybe you can go even a step further and say, well, uh, the way the, 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 what do you call this? If you have a template that is supposed to be followed, the way the author details are specified don't conform to the formatting guidelines or something like that. We want the emails to be maybe below the affiliation or something like that. Um, or you could say, oh, the affiliation is missing the country. You know? I don't know if that makes sense. Or you could say, oh, the orchid numbers are missing or something like that. Or what else? Well, your submission does not have page numbers. Right? Anyways, um, so the bottom line is these are the things that you typically do as part of the submission stage. Um, I'm going to pause here and suggest that we can continue this uh, when we meet next. But just to mention that at this stage, we're assuming that the thing we have reviewed, the thing we, we, we are processing as part of you know, the desk review process is okay. So we send it to review. I send to review. It would then move us to the next stage. Submission, we go to review. Okay? And indeed, if I go under submissions here, what you'll notice is that this thing that was in red, you notice here it's in orange, telling us that this thing is now in review. And the, the text that was alongside this warning icon Change from no edit assigned to waiting for reviewers to be assigned. All right, I'm going to pause here and uh, perhaps ask if people have any specific questions about this.